Hello, 3D printing friends. We're going to go through the Spirograph project today. This is a longer one, so feel free to stop, pause, fast forward, whenever you need to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to create new design on my Tinkercad dashboard. So now we've got a completely blank work plane. We don't have those instructions over on the left because we're going to be following directions over here from this project. Remember on our work plane, if you think of it as a piece of paper, from the top to the bottom is the Y axis, across is the X axis, and coming up into that third dimension is the Z axis. You're going to need to remember those as we get going. Okay, so I'm going to start by bringing in a tube located in basic shapes. And it's telling me that it's about nine shapes down on the left side. So I'm going to find tube. I'm going to grab my tube. I'm going to bring it over. And I want it to match the dimensions in my directions. If you follow these directions, you'll be on the right track. So I want it to be 110 on both the X and the Y axis, and then seven millimeters on the Z axis. So I can get rid of the shape inspector if I want. So I want to make this seven millimeters tall and I want it 110 millimeters going in both the X and Y direction. Okay. Now I want to bring in a box. We are familiar with the box. We've used that a lot. I want to make it 40 millimeters on both the X and the Y. And I want to make it four millimeters tall. So it's going to be a very, very short box. All right. Now I'm going to select base handle, which is what we're calling this, and I'm going to actually use this shape inspector now. So it's telling me to change the radius to five. So right up here where it says radius, and I'm just matching my directions, I'm going to click five and watch what happens to the box. Now it's got these rounded corners. And again, I'm just going to follow my directions. Duplicate base handle three times. We've learned a lot of ways to duplicate, so whatever way you want to do it is fine. We want to duplicate it three times so that we have four totals. So I've got one, two, three. It's telling me to move them so I can see all four. That's some pretty good advice, so I know what I'm working with. All right, I've got four base handles. And it's okay that it's off the work plane because we're going to be moving things around a lot. Okay, so now align base and first base handle. Okay, so there's a couple ways we can do this as usual. I can select it and I can hold the shift button down as I select the next one and I can see I've got two shapes there. Or I could do that marquee select where I try to grab both. And again, I'll know it works because it says two. If you're unsure of that, you can even move this a little bit closer and then grab them and then you'll know for sure that you've got those two. Okay, so it's telling me to align them. So I'm going to go up to my tools here and click align. And for this, it's telling me where to align, but it's also showing me. So as long as I click those correct handles to match the picture, I'm in good shape. And right now the bottom one was already selected, but soon it won't be. All right, so now I'm going to group the base and the first base handle. I'm going to make sure I don't move it. I'm going to group it. They should both turn the same color and they're grouped. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the next direction. Align base and second base handle. So same thing, I can kind of move it if I want to make sure I only grab that. I'm going to align it and I'm gonna make sure that I click the correct dots to make it work. Okay, and now I'm gonna group that one. So now both of those are the same color as the two. Okay, now going down to the third base handle, and again, same thing, you just want to make sure that when you're selecting, it ends up saying two shapes, and it's only two because this is all one piece now. So I'm going to align it again, just based on what these directions are telling me. I click align, I'm going to align to the top, to the right, bottom layer, I'm going to group, and now I'm going to go to that fourth base handle. So I'm going to grab them both, I'm going to align, and again, I'm just going to keep referring back to my directions. If I refer back to my directions, I'm going to be in good shape. Okay, I'm going to hit group. Okay, and mine looks like that, so I'm pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to scroll down. I can move this up out of the way if I want. Okay, now the directions are telling us bring in a useful gear located in all. 
Now, the trick with all up here, so I'm gonna get my drag, my drop down menu and click all. Every time they add a new shape, things move around a little bit. So we've tried to use our best reference. So for this one, it's saying that it was last seen on page three. And for right now, at least it is on page three. So I'm gonna scroll down so I can see the page numbers. I'm gonna click on three and I'm gonna look for useful gear. Now I see that there's a couple gears. So I wanna make sure I'm using the right one. It says useful gear. Here's useful gear. So I'm gonna drag it over. And now we're using that shape inspector again. So this has a lot of things, pitch, slop, number of teeth, height, bore diameter. It's okay if we don't know what those are because for right now we are just following the direction. So we're gonna change this pitch to five and let's see if we can see what changes. So it made it much, much larger. Okay, the slop we're gonna change from 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 and I'll give you a hint what to watch for. Watch the teeth. So I'm going to change that to 0.5. Give it a second. So it made the teeth a little bit skinnier. Okay. We want the number of teeth to be 30. So we're changing that. And that obviously is just going to give it more teeth. We're not changing the height, but we are changing the bore diameter. The bore is the middle part right here in the center. So by changing the bore diameter, we're changing it from six to 0 0.01. So we are making it much, much smaller. Okay, so there's our useful gear. And now it's telling me change base cutout to hole. And you can do that in two ways. You can click hole on the shape inspector, or if it's selected, you can actually just type the letter H on your keyboard and it becomes stripey and negative. So we know that it's now a hole. Okay. Now I'm going to align the base and the base cutout. So again, you don't have to drag it over, but if it makes it easier to grab both of them, you can bring them over. I'm gonna get both of them shapes one, two. I want to align them. And again, I'm just gonna keep checking back to these directions and making sure that mine matches. So I have the middle on the Y, I have the middle on the X and I have the bottom. I'm going to group them. And remember when we group them, we should now see the hole disappear. And there we have the base is finished for our spirograph. So that's it for part one. Check back for part two. Thanks.